So we're going to start out by getting interproximal first and we're working on surfaces away from us. And I like to use something nice and skinny for these lower anterior teeth. So I'm using the sickle scaler and I'm just starting at the line angle, rolling interproximal and going all the way up to the contact where the two teeth contact with this. And remember, with a sickle scaler, we're going to have a little bit of an angle to the instrument, so we have that 70 to 80 degree angle. So you can see I'm leaned over just slightly, and sometimes your teeth are going to be really, really tight together. And if that's the case, and you can't get up to the right underneath that contact very easy because the instrument's so thick, then I would just try to straighten out your instrument so it's a little bit more parallel and then it will fit right under that contact nicely. So rocking on your fulcrum when you're going through and scaling as well. Now we're gonna stay on, now we're gonna go onto the facial and we're gonna stay in the same chair position. we're going to do the surfaces away. Same instrument, we're just getting interproximal. And when you're scaling, you're scaling all the way up to the contact. And notice how I'm doing several strokes at once. I'm rocking on my fulcrum, doing several of them. That's what we want you to do. I do see sometimes students will slow down and just do a stroke, come out, do a stroke and that's going to take so long when you're dealing with a patient with this much calculus you're going to get used to doing probably four or five strokes right after another one right after another and you're going to use your fulcrum to rock on when you're doing those strokes just like you see in the video here so now that we've done all the surfaces away with the sickle scaler now we're going to switch and do the surfaces towards us So again, you're going to be rocking on your fulcrum and double check to make sure your handle is tipped up towards the maxilla as much as you can. That way you're going to be able to get this right underneath the contact very nicely. Another thing to keep in mind is making sure that you're using the very last one to two millimeters of the instrument when you're going through and trying to go right underneath that contact. If you are on the middle of your instrument, then it's gonna end up being too thick and you won't be able to get that calculus that would be right underneath there. Nice overlapping strokes and have your patients turn as you go from tooth to tooth. If you, It's okay to have them turn towards you, turn away from you, whatever you need them to do in order for you to be able to get that job done. And then we're going to finish up with the surface towards us on the facial side. And then after that, we should have all of the interproximal surfaces done. And again, just a little reminder, do not forget your angles. This is going to be very important when you're using a sickle scaler is that you lean in the surface that you're scaling on, you have just a little bit of an angle. Not too much of an angle, which I see is a common mistake when students are using a sickle scaler on the anterior teeth, especially when it's a posterior sickle, such as a nevi. I've seen students, like um, a nevi four, where their instrument is leaned over way too much, their angle is too big, and then they're scaling on the face. Plus, the instrument becomes a little too thick so that way they can't get right underneath the contact of these anterior teeth. We need something very thin to get under the contact, which calculus is seen all the time on these lower anterior. Now that we've finished up with the interproximal, now I'm going to start getting the straight facial and straight lingual surfaces. So I'm still gonna cut the tooth in half and right now I'm using an area specific curette, which is a one, two, and it has a nice rounded toe and I'm able to go subgingival. So when you're scaling off calculus like this, you're gonna go subgingival underneath the calculus and pulling up. 
So you're going to go just below the calculus and you're going to notice it will come off a lot easier. So this is a great instrument if you do have a little bit of that subgingival calculus. And I'm also rolling in a proximal as well, just to make sure I fully got that area as well. But I'm mainly focusing on the straight facial here. Nice overlapping strokes as we finish up. So now we're going to go to the lingual side and do the surfaces towards us as well. So stay in your chair position. So do your surfaces towards on the facial and the lingual before you do the surfaces away with the same instrument on the facial and lingual surfaces away. So that's how you're gonna really save some time is by staying in the chair position as long as you can. So you can see you're ro I'm rocking on my fulcrum. I'm, at, I'm not using my fingers to tug because otherwise I'll get fatigued, especially when there's this much calculus. I'm gonna use my fulcrum to get me the momentum to, for the scaling. And you're using your three points of pressure. If you feel like you're slipping around on the tooth, it's because your pressure is wrong. You need to have your three points of pressure, pinch pressure against the handle, fulcrum pressure, the fulcrum against the tooth, and lateral pressure is my thumb right now is pushing against the side of the tooth. Usually your lateral pressure comes from your thumb give, pushing against the side of the tooth. So all three pressures should be balanced. So now we've switched to the surfaces away from us, going through and getting the straight lingual. And remember, these are really tiny teeth, so this tends to be a little bit tricky for students. You're just using the very last millimeter or two of the instrument, and it has that rounded toe. And again, this is the best instrument for going subgingival because we only have one cutting edge. You can go subgingival with the sickle, but you don't the tissue has to really allow you to be able to do that. For someone that has healthy gingival tissue, that won't be the easiest thing to do. So I always like to go sub in the anterior with an area specific like I have here. I'm cleaning up those straight lingual surfaces. Now we're gonna switch and do the facial side of the teeth and do the away surfaces now on the straight facial with the area specific curette. So this will be the Gracie one, two again. And with the Gracie one, two, it's an area specific curette. So that means that you can keep the terminal shank parallel to the tooth structure you're working on. So the straight facial here, I'm keeping the terminal shank parallel with the straight facial as you're going along. And again, nice overlapping strokes. So you can get all of that calculus off and stain. And this is gonna be a common spot. You really will see a lot of stain is on these lower anterior teeth, a coffee stain or um, tea stain. And now that we finished up, I'm gonna go through and kind of do some final touches on the straight facial. And this is kind of more of an advanced technique where I have the toe down of the Gracie one, two, and I'm doing this horizontal stroke across the tooth in order to pick up some of that extra stain that was still there. And then I'm going from the other side here where again, I'm going to be cleaning up that extra stain with a completely different stroke. Vertical strokes, horizontal strokes, and oblique strokes. That's what are all gonna be what I'm gonna need to do in order to get stain off the teeth. Now I'm gonna flip it around and we're gonna do the straight lingual here and we're gonna have to get all this stain off the straight lingual. We cannot leave it there because it is a combination of probably stain and calculus. So I'm gonna find an instrument. I love using the Gracie Curette 1314 in this area. If your instructor will allow you to use this at this time, 
um, you're gonna have it where the bump of the peak of your mountain is pointing towards the tongue. Then you know you're on the cutting edge of the instrument. So you can use this instrument to take off stain. You can go at it with the side of the instrument where you're on the cutting edge. Or you can go at it with a straight toe and kind of picking up the stain. It's going to take a while. You're going to have to do many, many, many strokes in order to get this calculus off of the tooth. And you're not just going to do straight horizontal strokes. You're going to flip it around, probably do some vertical strokes. You might do some oblique strokes in order to get all this calculus off. Calculus off. I feel like you learn a lot when there's stain with the teeth. I feel like you really learn how to use your instruments well because you have to do a whole bunch of different types of strokes in order to get it fully off. And then I decided to switch to the 1718 McCall's. It's the universal curette, which has a cutting edge on both sides, but a really nice rounded toe. So this is a good instrument also to be able to use several different strokes on because it does have that cutting edge on both sides. But just see how nicely it's able just to pull off that stain. And you see how I'm just using several different strokes? Right now the toe is down. Eventually I might lean the handle up. And you're just gonna watch how many different strokes I use in order to get all that calculus off. So right now I'm going at it with a straight toe, which is really nice. And just playing around with your instruments, this is the time to really learn how to use them. Okay, and figuring out what's gonna work really nicely. But I decided to go to the McCall's just because it does have that cutting edge on both sides and that really big rounded toe because this is a nice thick instrument. And if I'm just dealing with a straight facial, I'm able to take off that calculus. See how nicely it's able to come off? When someone has this much stain, and if it's a very thick type of a stain, that tends to be, can be from your coffee and a combination of being a smoker. Smokers tend to have very thick stain on these lower anterior teeth and maxillary facials. Or not, excuse me, not maxillary facial, maxillary linguals. And I recommend that you scale, um, I recommend that you do this probably 10 times through. Calc up the lower anteriors and really, really practice them because this is where students tend to miss some, a lot of easy calculus to get off is on these lower anterior teeth. So the more you practice it at home, sitting in the proper position with your patient in the proper position, the better you'll be when you actually do have that much calculus on the teeth. Now, to go back and double check yourself because you can lose very nice, beautiful points, I went and grabbed the 1112 Explorer and I'm going through and checking to make sure that I got everything off the tooth. Now when you're going in a proximal, you should feel it nice and smooth. If you feel any jumps, just think it's probably calculus. It could be the CEJ, but more than likely if it's be, um, right underneath that contact there, it's going to be your calculus. So nice light, light exploring. And I recommend you exploring not just from the lingual, but you're gonna wanna explore from the facial as well because nice calculus can easily hide in one area or another. So checking from both sides. Here I'm just gonna show checking from the lingual side. You will also grab some floss and use the floss to double check too. Slow down when you go in between the teeth and really see if you feel any resistance anywhere because that's gonna be your calculus, okay? It should be nice and smooth all the way up to the contact. So this will be another way to double check yourself to make sure you didn't miss any of those low, the lower anterior calculus. And then what I didn't show was going to be using your mirror. Have your mirror and move it in several different directions 
and so and sit in the toward surface and away surface and look through your mirror with indirect vision to see if you missed any pieces and then for a final double check to make sure you have everything is to use air blow air on the lower teeth and blow air for a good 15 seconds sometimes more because sometimes it takes a while for that calculus to show up visual dental hygiene was created to make instrumentation easier to understand through videos that is how i know i have the correct end i always want the peak of my mountain to be towards the posterior teeth this tooth and we cut it directly in half the middle point of this tooth is going to be the long axis we have broken down each instrument step by step so you fully feel confident on how to use each instrument you see how I'm creating the triangle here one part of the triangle I'm towards the opposite arch the other part of the triangle I'm towards the arch I'm working on so when you're probing we should always be seeing your handles moving up and down just like this, because you're creating one side of the triangle, the other side of the triangle. We have instruments on the 1112 Explorer, the Paradonal Probe, the Sickle Scalers, the Universal Curettes, and area-specific curettes. So how do you become a member? You can go to visualdh.com, and that's where you can get more information on how to become a member of our program. We look forward to working with you, and we're very excited for you to be the most confident hygienist.